This, this is my 1991 Honda NSX. A car that really needs no introduction, but always feels a little lacking if you don't provide a little backstory as to why this car is not only legendary for Honda themselves, but for automotive enthusiasts the world over. Of course, you can't talk about the NSX without first mentioning Ayrton Senna, a man who inarguably transformed this car from being another Japanese sports car to being Japan's first supercar and an automotive icon. The first mass-produced automobile to have a fully aluminium monocoque chassis, the first Honda to have VTEC, and the first supercar to come out of Japan. There really wasn't much bad to say about the Ferrari slaying Japanese weapon that forced the hands of the greats like McLaren to change up what defined a modern supercar to the standards we see today. So you're probably asking yourself, of the Elite Four, why the Honda NSX? Well, you probably guessed by now from seeing all my other videos that I am mid-engine obsessed. So it only made sense for me to basically get the bigger version of a Toyota MR2. But really, my experience with cars, especially as a child, only really revolved around playing video games with my younger brother. It was something I enjoyed for sure, but it was never really something I thought that I'd be interested in as I grew older. As opposed to now where I'm, yeah, I'm obsessed. <laughs> it all started one fateful day where a young teenage Steph took her very first car to one of her very first track days. One particular car really caught her eye. It was nothing but this red blur, an absolute missile just caning past one of the straights at the racetrack. The sound was euphoric. That was the first time I ever saw in person a Honda NSX. It was the first car ever to genuinely leave me with goosebumps. And I feel so privileged and so proud to say that not even a decade later, I was able to finally achieve that dream and get the car. And it's something that to this day is one of my proudest and biggest achievements. So in closing, this is my childhood dream. Yeah, it's stone chips have stone chips and yeah, it leaks more oil than I put in. But that's to be expected of a 31 year old car. I mean, even to today's standards, it still holds up really well. And this car is just so fantastic. It handles beautifully. It keeps up to speed amazingly. The brakes, although could definitely be improved, are pretty fantastic. There's honestly not a single thing I could think of on this car that lets it down or holds it back in any way. Absolutely nothing at all. Well, except one thing. So, <laughs> Elephant in the room, yes, it is an automatic car, yes, it's a piece of shit, yes, I am peak automatic scum for choosing such a horrendous thing, for, for committing such a heinous crime, you know. How, How dare, dare you? you? <laughs> a car that was designed, you know, it has it has F1 prowess, it has it has Ayrton and Senna stamped to its name, and how dare I buy such an iconic vehicle with an automatic transmission. I know, it is just sacrilege. I'm not, I'm not gonna deny it. Please, talk as much shit as you want. I deserve it. But let me explain. It's not, it's not because I'm an automatic sympathizer, I promise you. I'm not gonna defend the automatic trans. I've had this car two years now. I've done quite a lot of drives in it. It is, it is pretty bad. I wouldn't say it's as bad as like everybody says, um, but it is pretty terrible, absolutely. Um, but, this isn't, this isn't going to be the long-term plan, of course. Uh, if you've had a look at my other videos on the channel, it is currently dominated with my manual conversion series for my 1987 Toyota MR2. This car will be next on that list. However, it's been a bit longer than I kind of expected due to, well, COVID and, and work. Obviously, it's been hit pretty hard. Um, but also, finding the parts is just... Like, I knew it was difficult, but I didn't think it was going to be this difficult. And so one of the main issues I have at the moment is there's a couple of parts that are JDM specific for the manual because obviously this is a right hand drive vehicle whereas of course the Acura is a left hand drive. One thing that I didn't quite realize I did need to change is or, or be aware of is the gearbox between JDM and American USDM are different. The USDM gearboxes are a much longer ratio. They're designed for, you know, they're designed for long straight roads. That is, that is what the States is known for. Um, whereas, of course, the Japanese gearboxes, they're a lot tighter. The type of driving I do, I definitely want to chase going for the JDM ratio over the US ratio. So that's my first major problem, is finding a JDM gearbox, which is really difficult. And when you do find them, they're very expensive. So that's been my biggest hurdle. The other one, very common, of course, uh, the cams and heads are different to the automatics. Um, that's not been too bad. I have actually sourced a set of JDM cams and heads, and that's just connecting, collecting all of the other kind of smaller bits, which is stuff that I haven't quite yet 
um, sourced. So that's all that's all stuff that's taking a lot longer than I had expected. To be quite frank, I'm not really pushing it because as I said earlier, you know, obviously we're finally getting to the end of the whole COVID period, but it's something I still have to be very aware of. Um, as of August last year, I actually quit work and I'm trying to sort of go at it myself and go self-employed. So money is absolutely something I have to be very aware of. Um, but it's still not stopping my goals of, of having a manual NSX and I'm sure you're all asking at this point okay well look you've explained that you're going to be converting this car why not just buy the manual and that's really simple too price I'm a cheapskate the only other two things I can really think of off the top of my head that that I think would definitely do with improvement uh, for this car is the bricks they're not that great <laughs> um, probably doesn't help the fact that you know the car factory is staggered with its wheels so it's factory front 15 inch and rear is 16 inch so the front brakes are very tiny um, and then the only other thing I really don't like about the car is the steering is horrendous um, it's got that really weird like electric but not steering power steering where sometimes it'll decide to be fully electric and sometimes it will decide not nah, you can just have manual steering and it's really uh, off-putting concerning um, sometimes just downright terrifying when you're you know you're trying to tackle a mountain road and all of a sudden you know you're fully locked and then all of a sudden because you're just slow enough uh, power steering decides to turn on and you end up just fully locking and scaring the shit out of yourself and shitting your pants and probably your passenger is too <laughs> but aside from that like the car is fantastic I, I can't think of honestly anything really wrong with it except for, except for those those three things the community for these is absolutely fantastic um, you do get like occasional hiccups here and there like I know a big one that people seem to get upset about is when you happen to post wanting to do something to your automatic NSX um, the worst one for me was when I just got the car two years ago I, I basically made a post up on a bunch of the pages just asking about advice um, who's done swaps before what are common things to look out for parts costs that kind of stuff and the number of people who came through basically saying I bought the wrong platform I should have bought the manual how dare you convert your automatic car why can't you just enjoy it as is you know people are trying to people just got really upset and I just sat there going well I mean it was cost at the end of the day well no that's not entirely true it was timing I think and then cost a bit of background on this car it's a 91 it's JDM lowish case for what it is um, it's formula red except it's not formula red <laughs> actually this car originally was um, Kaiser silver metallic and we suspect it, the respray was done in Japan though to be fair this car has been in New Zealand for an awfully long time um, but yeah at some point someone decided that actually they didn't want a Honda they wanted a Ferrari and so they painted it um, now the color I think I'll correct it if I'm wrong is called Milano red and it's from the DC5 Integra now that's just a fun little tidbit it's not a factory red color which works really well for me because my last car prior to this was an E46 M3 BMW a molar red factory six-speed manual any kind of show and shine I'd go to most of them I would win for being you know the nicest car there and for someone who loves driving it really did get to me and at the, at the stage especially with the value that they shot I kind of sat there going like can't keep living like this and driving cars like this because I'm just getting paranoid about damaging them because of the value so yeah I, I decided to sell the M3 and then timing and convenience this car became available um, it was very cheap for what it was uh, to be fair I did need quite a lot of convincing because of the fact that I, I did not want to buy it because it was an automatic um, but some sense was knocked out of me and I yeah I bought a JDM supercar with a Honda Odyssey gearbox and it sucked <laughs> but I mean aside from that you know the car drives fantastically its handling is amazing you know it really doesn't feel like something from the 90s it just holds itself so well um, you know as I said before you know I quite often take this on you know drives and it's it honestly it holds itself to its own and even just driving along here can't really hear any squeaks or rattles the only squeak you can really hear is you know from the leather on the seats um, it's a really 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 nice place to be in I must say one thing that really shocked me and I guess it's this thing I would assume it must just be when you buy you know an older Japanese car I guess you expect there to be sounds and noises and squeaks and rattles and all that kind of stuff and then hopping into this it just shocked me shocked me with the, the silence it's just silent and it's so nice you know it's such a nice way to be a place to be and I totally get the whole like I know everybody talks about the sort of the f16 you feel like you're in a cockpit 
um, I think that's freaking awesome. What I really like about it, because I've been quite a few sort of cockpity cars, um, what I quite like about this is, is it feels, you know, very streamlined to the driver. You know, you, you do kind of, you slip into the car, but it doesn't feel small. It's still really spacious. You know, it's definitely designed for all sizes. This was my childhood dream, and you know, I, I still kind of pinch myself, or find myself wanting to pinch myself every so often when I go downstairs and look at the garage and realize, holy crap, like, <laughs> I've actually achieved this. You know, I've actually achieved my dream car. Um, you know, despite despite the transmission issues. Community as well is really cool on these. Everybody is incredibly helpful and kind and friendly. And like, I guess it's because you know, the NSX community isn't very big. So everybody's encouraging one another and, and wanting to sort of make sure that people stay in the community as long as they can or have, you know, the best experience they possibly can. There's one guy in particular, if you, if you have to be watching this, I think you are absolutely like the bee's knees the NSX community. I don't know how often he does it, it's at least once a month. He'll have, um, I think he calls them Friday Tech Tip, and he'll make a post on, on a couple of the NSX owners pages, and it will just be like links to your heart's content, you know, what you could possibly imagine you would need to do on an NSX. And he'll have, you know, all the things you could possibly think of wanting to do the Honda, and links to, you know, NSX Prime, or, or what have you, on how to do it, um, parts required. You know, it's such, such an, like, a well of knowledge that guy he just like he's the hero we don't deserve <laughs> it's just he's so cool he's honestly just the coolest person and see stuff like that you know it's not just him there's quite a few other people that do similar stuff but he's he's the big one that that does that kind of stuff and it's just it's so cool to see that you know a, a, a platform of vehicle you know 30 years on three decades has still got such strongly motivated and and passionate owners and it's just awesome the aftermarket parts of these is also just abundant it's just so rich um, again anything you want to do to the car or think of wanting to do to the car chances are someone's done it um, people you know parts that you can't really find anymore have been discontinued somebody's somebody's 3d printing it people are still making white kits people are making LED conversions there's like huge write-ups on how to do it yourself there's still so much you can do and such huge support and you know on top of that you don't feel like you're the only person trying it because there's going to be at least 10 other people before you that have done the exact same thing so there's almost like this assurance that it's quality um, which is just so cool about the community it's great and I, I you know it's taken me a while to actually finally get around to modifying my car but you know I'm so I'm so proud to finally to finally get there and I really hope that you know the stuff that I post will certainly be useful to, to future NSX owners. There's, there's heaps of YouTubers who have NSXs, yes, I'm not denying that. I'm just being another one of those, but there's not too many that kind of are automatic NSX owners. And, I mean, to be fair, I haven't had a properly in-depth look, but I haven't seen too much in regards to manual converting in NSX, so I think that'll definitely be something I, I like to think will be really useful. There's heaps of, um, like, forum posts and, 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 like, build threads on how to do it, but not, like, a video kind of step-by-step. -step. So, yeah, I mean, if that's something you guys are interested in, definitely leave me a, a sub, um, or just let me know in the comments, you know, you don't need to sub if you don't want to. <laughs> um, but that is definitely something that's going to be happening in the future, um, and it'll be much the same as my um, MR2 conversion series, um, but hopefully with a lot less mistakes. <laughs> Uh, you know, that that was such a, what a mess. There's <laughs> also not really a dull day in one of these. Um, it's good and a bad thing, I guess. I mean, obviously, when you drive a car like this around, it probably doesn't help that it's bright red and everybody mistakes it as being a Ferrari. A Ferrari? No, Papa. I've had people shake my hands because, you know, like total strangers off the street come in and try and shake my hand because they think it's cool that they see this chick in a in Ferrari. Um, I've had a bridal party come up to me wanting photos um, because one of the bridal parties contests was to take a photo with a supercar. I've had people at rallies I've attended. Um, to be fair, that one, <laughs> that one was kind of intentional. Um, they weren't, they were confused as to what kind of Ferrari it was. And then when they saw the registration and realized it was an NSX, they were like, oh, that makes so much sense because what I had done, I decided to dress up as Magnum PI, and of course he has a red Testarossa. So it didn't help that I covered up all the Honda badges um, and then on the side fenders put little Scuderia <laughs> badges on it. But um, yeah, like, it's one of those things, you don't really expect it to actually happen, but it happens a lot more than I certainly realized initially that, yeah, it probably doesn't help the car is red and like, it does, I guess, look like an old Ferrari, I suppose. So yeah, that's all I can really think of, to be honest, to talk about. 
Um, I hope it hasn't been too boring for you guys. Apologies for it being a bit choppy. It felt a bit choppy recording this. I'm very camera shy as well. And I can't wait to go for a drive with you guys next time. <laughs> Don't forget to yeah share this along if, if you enjoy it. Like and subscribe, whatever you want. But yeah, thanks guys and see you next time. Oh, oh shit. Jesus, Stephanie. I broke my car. And on today's episode, I fix a wing mirror, sorry, a rear view mirror that I elbow, sorry, I need. Because I'm a fucking idiot. Fuck, my eyes are burning from the light.